All right, I'm Kevin Coleman with the Saddle Post, and I am yet again with Teresa Reap. Hi. Who's going to tell us about Shine On Chillicothe. Exactly. We are really excited this year. We have more lights than we had last year. Uh, last year, we identified that there were some dark areas that just really needed a pop, so we were able to fill that. Another uh, big addition that we have is a huge lighted chair that your whole family can sit in to get your picture taken. Uh, there's going to be some thrilling, exciting lights that come down the bank of the hill from behind the caboose into the lake. So you're going to see a lot of new lights this year, mm -hmm. in addition to all the wonderful things that we already had. And this is the third year? This is our third year, yes, for Shine On Chillicothe. Um, we're going to light the big Christmas tree and kick off the uh, lights in the park on S November 17th, on Friday night, around 6.30. Is that the uh, downtown open house? Downtown open house kickoff. We have a lot of exciting things that are um, happening that night. Santa, of course, will arrive. It's going to be better than ever before. We've figured out some logistics that are going to make it a little more comfortable for people when Santa comes. Santa's house has been moved over to in front of the armory so that there's not so much congested traffic on Enderland Circle. It, uh, we've tried to really look at what people were enjoying and how they were using the light displays, interacting with them to make it more user friendly. So it's not just something you look at, it's something that you can actually participate in. It's very fun to watch the children running around in the lights and people posing. And we've even had a few weddings. So that's pretty impressive that we've had weddings in like the bandstand and the gazebo when the lights were up. I hope the weather cooperated when they got married. I hope so. I'll tell you what the weather has been two years in a row now. We have had amazing weather in October when it's time to put those lights up. So that's... And you're already putting lights up. Oh, yes. They're almost finished. We have two commercial companies that help. One is um, Bright Solutions, and the other one is Light Up Columbus. There are some things, well, there, I put that mildly, there's a lot of electrical work that volunteers can't do. And Bright Solution is very, um, that's Erica and Casey Oliver. They're very instrumental in that. And then Light Up Columbus, they come down um, and they have a lot of experience with the really big displays and how we can put them up. And he has a lot of ideas. He has big trucks as does Bright Solution, which we need. The Armory, the city of Chillicothe has donated the Armory that we can use that to store things. So we are eight, we don't have to pay to have maintenance and storage now because we can just store it right there in the park. And, and when there's work that we started working, well, actually we start working the day we take the lights down in January, we start working on the upcoming year, but we actually started working in the armory on lights way this summer, like June and July, we were down there working. Hmm. So it's it's good that we have a spot that we can work in and that we can store things. But the lights don't go on until? November 17th. All right. That's our big night. We, uh, it's pretty amazing, actually, how this all happens. It's primarily a group of ladies that are down there and then we physically take the lights, wrap the trees, do the work. This year we had um, quite an entourage of volunteers that came in in September and early October. And Erica Oliver from Bright Solutions actually trained them on how to do the lights. So there, last year there were six of us. This year there's a bigger crew just community volunteers and, and we want the community, this is everybody's project and we want the community to be involved, to come down and say, hey, 
I want to help. And you do have a, a couple companies who pay for their employees to help? Or? Yes, there's been um, Kohl's donated and Horizon has helped. Um, both of them, and of course the city of Chillicothe has been very helpful. Um, but it's not, it's not a city project and it's not financed by the city. It's not tax dollars that go into this. It's uh, donations from the most generous community in the United States, I think. <laughs> and that's our Ross County community. And this is a pretty big light display. Does it, how does it compare to others people might know of? Well, I think it compares to Gallipolis. Um, it, it's over $100,000 to put it on every year. And uh, we're very fortunate. We have some consistent um, large donors. South Central Ohio Power, um, the Adena Health Systems, I don't want to leave anybody out. The Chillicothe Restoration Foundation. Uh, I'm going to add to that here in a bit. And Star Printing Company and Bright Solutions have been major, major contributors to this project at 10,000 and plus. Uh, we just have, we have lots of donors that are between uh, the three and $10,000 bracket and have been consistent. Tomlinson Insurance, Homeland Credit Union, Mayor's Cares Counseling. You'll notice the, the fish stand. That's the via the 40 and 8 fish yeah. stand. That's um, VFW Post 108 and the uh, Veterans Associations. Put that up with the big American flag. So, I mean, we just have support. The Hernstein Foundation, and Horizon Telecom have both been con continuously generous um, contributors. And the big Christmas tree at the top of the park, we can thank Petland and Ed Kunzelman families for that. The Kunzelman families in Petland, they provide that big Christmas tree. So we've, we've got some, and then the list goes on and on and on for smaller donors. Uh, have contributed. They'll be on the big Christmas card at the top of the park, just like last year. And on your website and Facebook page? Website. Have we have a website. We have a Facebook page where you can um, see our constant, you can see what's going on, and you can also see who our donors are, who the contributors are. We And we have right down to $20 donors. We've been in the park decorating. Someone will drive through and they'll say, we just want to help and hand us $20. So we've had, we just have a, every, every group of people in this community is represented in those lights. And what is your website? The, it's Shine On Chillicothe. And that's also our Facebook page. We do, um, DJ Hazel is going to be there this year, and we also have some piped-in music. We have caroling groups that are going to be there. It's just, and Santa, I don't know, I don't think I mentioned, Santa has been moved, I did, in front of the armory, yeah. So there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's, it's going to be, it's, it's a destination. And again, that big night. November 17th, 6.30. 6.30 Top of the park. A oh, it'll run. Couple hours? Well, no. We are a little bit where we say, hey, welcome to, Chill you know, shine on Chillicothe. And Santa arrives. That takes 15 minutes and then the lights are on. The lights don't go off. You know, they'll be on all night. And then, of course, the downtown Chillicothe, I think a lot of the stores are open until 9, 10 o'clock. And the local restaurants. I do want to mention... Um, We've had a contribution, and I want you to notice on 2nd Street. Um, Kelly Johnson called me and said, I ha believe it or not, I have eight Christmas trees at my house, and I have decorations for all of those Christmas trees. It's time that I do something with them. So she's worked with Ed Kunzelman, who owns several empty storefronts on 2nd Street, 
be watching. She's been working on them. They're being decorated. They're in the windows. And there's going to be an online auction the weekend of the downtown open house. There'll be an online auction for all eight of those trees. And every penny is going to come back to shine on Chilla Coffee with just a donation from Kelly and Mark Johnson to the community. So it'll be a perfect time to buy a pre-set up Christmas tree. Yes, a perfectly lit and decorated Christmas tree. And December 9th and 10th, the Chillicothe Restoration, uh, very experienced organization with tours. Kevin is a member of that, as am I. We organize the um, Chillicothe Christmas Tour of Homes. And this year, it's going to be right where Kevin and I are sitting in Story Place. So Story Place is going to be the feature. There's going to be houses on Fairway, Worthington, Pyatt, and up on Annis Court. And there's also going to be a couple houses over on Church Street. So there's going to be some beautiful homes, a little bit different than the downtown historic tour of homes that we've had. We're looking at Story Place. Uh, for lack of a better description, it was the first suburb to Chillicothe. Several of the homes in this community are over 100 years old. It's still largely an automotive suburb. Well, a, a trolley. Trolley. There was a trolley barn right over yeah. on Delano. Uh, the first house built in Story Place on the corner of Fairway and Arch, right at the foot of the country club, the 